I've worked very hard to get to this point and the fact that there are still no guarantees on my future, it, it's a tough thing to deal with every day. Good morning everyone. It's a new week and a new rotation and I'm really liking the rotation I'm on right now for a couple of different reasons and I'll tell you more about it in a little bit but for now I'm gonna go and get ready. So this is the outfit of the day. I honestly don't remember the last time I wore my white coat, so I definitely had to get some of the dust off of it. But I'm gonna take it off for now while I am driving to the clinic. No. Alright guys, so like I said, I am on a new rotation right now. I am rotating through medical oncology. And for any of you guys who have been watching my channel for a few years, you'll know that my last clinical experience before medical school was actually when I was working as a scribe for an oncologist. So it's kind of cool because there's a lot of familiarity here, even though it's not the exact same place that I used to work at, it's very similar in a lot of different ways. And I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but for now, I just finished driving like 45 minutes to get to this clinic, and I'm actually not quite at the clinic yet. I'm actually at a coffee shop that I've never been to before, but a good friend of mine actually just started working as a barista here. And it just so happens to be less than a mile away from the clinic, which is perfect because I haven't gotten to visit her since she started working here, and I have about half an hour till I need to be at the clinic, so that should be enough time to go in, say hi, I grab some coffee and head over to the clinic. <laughs> Alright guys, so I forgot to mention, I actually got the new iPhone 15 and this is my first time using the cinematic mode when I went in there to go and film Bianca while she was making me the coffee. And honestly, the quality is kind of insane. Um, I'm just gonna throw this clip in just to compare with the uh, footage I took earlier, but wow, that is kind of insane. Anyway, now that we've got the coffee, let's head over to the clinic. So I just got out of the clinic. It was a pretty busy day today because it's already like 5.30 p.m. Like it's pitch black outside as you guys can tell. So pretty long day, my feet hurt, but it was a good day overall. I have a long drive home, so I'm going to get going and then probably gonna go to the gym for a little bit and then head home for the night. And tomorrow we'll do it all over again. All right guys, so welcome back to another day. It's honestly been a really chill week working at this oncology clinic. My role as a medical student is quite minimal, not gonna lie. I've mostly been doing a lot of shadowing when I'm in the room. Um, I have a couple of tasks like following up with patients on certain test results, you know, calling them a couple days later. But overall, it's like a lot more chill compared to my last few rotations that were uh, you know, inpatient or in the OR when I was doing my anesthesia rotation where you're working with your hands all day, you're kind of always on your feet, moving, doing things. This rotation's a lot more relaxed, which is kind of a nice break from what I've been doing. So right now we're at the midpoint of the day and I'm on a lunch break, so I thought I'd come to the car and do a little bit of vlogging. So I said earlier in the vlog that my last clinical experience before medical school was actually working as an oncology scribe. Well, the cool thing about this rotation is that they actually have scribes 
that are in there and doing pretty much everything that I used to do back before medical school. And seeing people doing what I used to do is a really good reminder that I am moving forward. Like it really doesn't feel like I've moved forward in life over the past few years, but obviously I know that's not true. I'm in my fourth year of medical school now, matching in three months, graduating in five months. That is a long ways and just because medical student is the next step up from, you know, being pre-med or, you know, working, you know, in a clinical setting, it, it doesn't mean that you haven't moved that far just to move on to that next step. It really has been a long path and it's just a nice kind of thing to be able to reflect back on. I do enjoy kind of being able to tell the scribes about my experience and, you know, some of the stuff I've learned just as a medical student now that are good to keep in mind. That's pretty much what I do with this YouTube channel. But it's nice to do with people that I'm working with in the hospital or in the clinic that are moving on to the next step of being a medical student eventually. But the thing is, as far as I've come and as hard as I've worked to get to this point, I'm kind of approaching what I consider to be the scariest part of medical school. And that is that my future is still extremely uncertain. You know, being pre-med, obviously there's still a level of uncertainty. You're trying to get in, you're applying, you're interviewing, and you don't completely know where you're gonna go. But if you get interviews from medical schools and you get some acceptances, um, you can kind of choose which acceptance you take, what school you wanna end up at, and can plan your life a little bit based around that. But the extent to which I've been able to plan my life kind of ends right at match. And the reason is obviously because we go through this interview process and this match process, but at the end of the day, there are no guarantees that are going to come out of March. And that's really scary. And the closer I get to March, the more nervous I'm getting. I mean, no matter how well I think these interviews go, there's a chance that I don't get into my top choice, my second choice, my third choice, my fourth, fifth, sixth choice. I mean, there's a chance that I don't match into any anesthesia program and that's going to completely change the trajectory of what I'm doing if I have to scramble or if I have to wait another year to apply again. Even if I do match, I don't know where I'm going to match to. I mean, I can get an idea based off of where I've had my interviews at and start to kind of think about my life in the sense of, okay, if I end up at this place, here's what I can do. If I end up at in this city, here's what I can start doing to prepare. But honestly, there really isn't a whole lot you can do, right? Like I can't start planning really anything because I just don't know what's gonna happen. And this really is the pinnacle of uncertainty in this entire process. Like again, there have been many moments where you don't know what's gonna happen next. You don't know if you're gonna get in. You don't know if you're gonna do well. You don't know what life circumstances are gonna happen. Like I have had several you know, personal life circumstances happen throughout medical school that I couldn't have prepared for. And that uncertainty was always going to be there. But now we're kind of reaching the very end of those uncertain moments and those, you know, things you just can't plan ahead for. And so the moment that March comes around and I find out what happens, you know, with the match, I can pretty much start to plan the rest of my life for essentially the first time in this entire process. And don't get me wrong, like I'm very excited. I, I'm so excited. In fact, I'm extremely over being a medical student. I'm very much ready to move on to the next phase. And the closer we get to March, the more I feel like my feet are kind of dragging and time is moving a lot slower, but it's honestly terrifying. It's scary. I, I can't, you know, talk to people about future plans because, you know, everything I say, I'm like, oh, well, I got to find out what happens in March. I got to find out what happens with the match versus a lot of your friends that are like, oh yeah, you know, I'm working here. I'm going to do this for a little while. Then I'll switch over here. Or I'm thinking about moving here because I've always wanted to live in this city. So I think we're just going to pack up and go and do that. Or I'm saving up for this. And it's all stuff that they can kind of be future oriented for, but it's really hard to be future oriented as a medical student. Besides obviously what you want to specialize in and you know, the life you want to kind of broadly live. You can't really make concrete plans until you find out what happens. I don't know why I wanted to talk about this today. I think it's because I've been reflecting about how far I've come since my pre-med years, but you know, I don't know. I I'm hoping that in like four years, I can look back on me right now and be like, oh, I was so worried about nothing. And I, you know, didn't really matter because everything worked out the way it needed to. And that's really what I'm hoping for. But I just feel like people don't really 
talk about this part of the process enough in the sense that it, it is nerve wracking and anxiety inducing and stressful. And I've worked very hard to get to this point. And the fact that there are still no guarantees on my future, it, it's a tough thing to deal with every day and to think about constantly whenever people ask about how things are going. Um, saying I don't know is, is is rough when you've worked this hard. Sorry for the long winded rant guys, but this is my vlog. So you guys are, uh, you guys are here to listen to me, I guess, rant about whatever is on my mind. So if you're still watching, I definitely appreciate you. I'll be on this rotation for another week or so and then move on to winter break, which is really exciting. It'll be nice to have a two week break. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here and head back in the clinic and eat some lunch. But again, if you stuck through it this far, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I will see you guys next week. No.